Hey kiddos, today we're going to talk about how to plug uh, scientific notation numbers in particular into your calculator to make sure that when you do your calculations and such that you're getting the correct answer. I, over the course of my teaching I've noticed a lot of times students can set up the problems correctly, they feel like they're plugging everything in right, and then when I go over to help them I see that the only real mistake they're making is just punching numbers into the calculator incorrectly. So we're going to make sure that you're not doing that today. So um, I'm going to show you how to do this on a TI calculator. You certainly don't have to use a TI calculator, but that's kind of the default for a lot of students. Um, and so I just we're going to show you how to do it on that. If, if your calculator doesn't have these same keys or they're not in the same place, look for them. I guarantee that there's some sort of exponential um, notation key somewhere on your calculator, assuming that it's a, it's a scientific calculator. So how does this work? So we've got Avogadro's number here. We talked about this in the scientific notation video. Really big number. We need to condense that down. We're going to condense it down to this by shifting the decimal. The number of decimal places we moved then becomes our exponent here. And so this is our actual number that we're going to punch in the calculator. So how do I put that in? So a lot of times I've seen students do some variation. Okay, so they're going to, they might try this where they hit the 10x key. Okay, that's all right. Um, but, but not really the best way. I've seen students do this, which is where they do times, and then they'll do 10 to the 23rd. Okay. Again, that not the best way. Okay, you'll notice that we're getting the same number both times, and this is the correct number. What this E means is the E here means times 10 to the 23rd. So really the best way to do this then is instead of doing these other things where we're plugging in what we think is okay, is to go ahead and do what the calculator is looking for and put this E in. So let me show you how to put that in. 6.023, and then we're going to hit second, but instead of hitting the 10x key, we're going to hit this key right here, the double E. Okay, that's going to give us this capital E here, and again that capital E means times 10 to the 23rd. You'll notice that when I enter this in, it's exactly the same as the output from the other numbers. And so that's going to give us the correct number. Now, you may be saying to yourself, hey, they all three gave me the same thing. That's true as far as entering them in on their own. What, where the complication arises is when you're doing calculations. And then order of operations and weird things like that sometimes start to really throw some students off. Uh, one of the struggles that I always have with this or with many things um, in class is that students, I tell them the right way to do it. Um, students being students, teenagers being teenagers, they're like, no, I've been doing it this way for a long time and I'm getting the right answers. You might get the right answer sometimes, but I want you to get the right answer all the time. And so that's why we're talking about how to do it this way. This way will ensure that you're doing it correctly. So let's do a calculation real quick with it. So I've got 2.84 and we're going to use second and our E key to the 19th. We're then going to divide that by 6.023, and we're going to use our E key again to get 23, and I'm going to get my answer, okay, which is that, okay, all the numbers in the calculator. Now, we of course know that we can't leave it like that, that we need to round that to the correct number of significant figures. Remember that for significant figures, if we're dividing, all that matters is what's the least number that my initial measurements or, or counts had, or my initial measurements had. So three sig figs here, one, two, three, four here, one, two, three, four. That zero counts because it's captive. It's in between non-zeros. Okay, the exponents don't matter at all. The 10 doesn't matter at all. It's only the coefficient part of the scientific notation that actually matters. So that means I need three sig figs in my answer. Since the next number is a five, I'm going to round that up. And so my final answer is going to be 4.72 times 10 to negative fifth. Okay, pretty straightforward. Again, the E key will make the calculations a lot easier. You're like, well, I could have done that just with parentheses or with the times 10x. You, you probably could have, okay? The problems are going to get a little bit more complicated, though. Okay, as we start to get into moles and molar mass and stuff, they're going to start to look more like this. So I'm going to walk you through this problem real quick just to make sure that you really start to see the value of plugging in the E key. And what I would encourage you to do is if you haven't been using the, the double E key is to Go ahead and try it on your own. Do it the way that you've done it and make sure you're getting the right things, okay? And when you start to stumble later on in the year and you're not getting the answers that are on the answer key or that I'm telling you are the correct answers, go back and recalculate with the double E and I bet you'll see the value of it when that comes up. So let's walk through this real, real quick. So when you've got a train truck problem or a conversion factor problem like this that has a bunch of stuff here, 
I think the easiest thing to do, and what you should always do, is take the stuff in the numerator, multiply it together, then divide. That's what the bar here is for. It's basically a compound fraction. Divide it by everything in the denominator, multiply it together. We are going to put those parts in parentheses because I've got multiple things going on. I'm going to take this number times this one times this one, all of those together, divided by these numbers all multiplied together. Okay, so let's put that in our calculator and see what that looks like. I'm going to clear the screen here just so you can see just this problem. So parentheses, 2.84. Going to put my E in there. Okay, and hopefully one of the reasons I wanted to show you a video for it is that you can follow the red marks and see where my last um, keystrokes were here on the calculator so you can actually really see what happened. Times 18.0. Now, again, I don't really have to put the 0.0. I didn't really have to put the 1 because anything times itself is already 1. But I want to make sure that you can see everything that's going on there. Divided by, now we're going to do the denominator. Avogadro's number, 6.023. E, okay, times 10 to the 23rd. That's what that E means. Okay, whoops. Hold on, didn't want to close that parenthesis yet. Times 1. And again, I didn't really have to do that. I could have gone ahead and closed the parenthesis. In fact, since it was a 1, I didn't really even have to put the parenthesis. I could have just put divided by and Avogadro's number and everything would have been fine. But I want you to make sure that you see this and get in the habit of putting numbers in correctly. Okay? That's going to give us this number. Obviously, that's not the right number of sig figs. For sig figs, it kind of looks like the lowest would be 1. But these 1 moles don't count for sig figs because they're part of conversion factors. And we'll talk about all that in the conversion factors unit. What really matters is this first number here, my given, and it has one, two, three sig figs. My answer should therefore have three sig figs, and that is going to be my correct answer. That seven obviously is going to cause that to round up to nine. Okay, hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how to punch things in the calculator and really recognize the power of this double E key. It's going to be really useful to you. Please make sure that you're using it every time you punch something in with scientific notation.